Hey everyone, so we have a really cool and dramatic Wine of the Week episode planned for you. This is Costa di Amalfi and Ravello Bianco specifically. I'm going to be real honest with y'all, I don't know what grapes are in this wine. So I'm just going to go ahead and take my stab at trying to blind taste this wine. So here we go. <laughs> Bear with me now. Um, Although I have a brown table, I can still see that the wine through the glass is shining a little bit of golden, but not being overly gold or yellow. It just has that little bit of a gold tinge on the rim, and I'm not seeing any sign of gas nor sediment. Um, and it looks like a medium, medium plus, if anything, viscosity. Um, let's go ahead and give it a smell. First thing we always want to check is, is the wine clean? You brought a clean wine, Chuck. No I feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> so the wine is clean. And the wine, the first thing that comes out to me, there's a lot of layers here, but the first thing for me, I know we throw this word around a lot, but it's going to be minerality. This is not a fruit-driven wine. This is more of a soil base, a um, little bit more of an earthy-driven wine. Of the earth, I am not yet sure, so let's find out. Um, it doesn't really smell like a potting soil or like a really organic forest floor. It feels a little bit more stony, maybe a little bit more of like a limestone-ish like quality to it. Calcaris, white. White, white. White on. White on. And then there's also this layer of like a sea foam, a little bit of salinity. I don't know if there is a laziness to it. It has like, but it does have like kind of this kind of yeasty thing going on. Yeah. I could be wrong. I think it's lazy. Yeah, yeah a little bit of laziness. Um, for those of you just tuning in for lees, um, that's when you think about like sourdough bread notes. Sometimes people say stale beer. It's really popular in varietals like, let's say a Pinot Grigio. Um, so when you get that yeasty smell of wine, that's going to be lees contact. Um, I personally don't get a lot of oak aging, if any. I don't really see any real spice notes or warm baking spices or anything like that. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is a very mineral, salty, slightly lazy wine. The fruit quality would be a little bit more tart from on the nose, but let's go ahead and give it a taste on the palate. It has a very long finish, which is the first thing that I notice. Um, it's gonna be, for me, medium plus acidity, maybe medium alcohol. I don't know. <laughs> um, and it has maybe a little bit more than a medium body. I'm not gonna say this is like a big, juicy wine at all. It has a lift, but there is still a nice base note going through it as well. Um, it's not lean and angular, but it's not like oaky and round. It's like kind of perfectly balanced in between. I think it's a great wine. Yeah, how does it flow from beginning to end? Um, so I think that there's a lot of layers, but none of them jut out in an awkward way. There's a lot of, I taste the sea foam, I taste like a little bit of a tart fruit, I taste the minerality, but it's all seamless. It's yeah, not exactly. where I don't see any point sticking out. I know there's acidity, but it's not jabbing me in the face with and, it. And, and although um, the viewer think that will think this is the first wine we're tasting, this is actually the second wine. We did a previous, you can see this one has more mojo. It has more stuff, has in, a little has bit more, more grit. Oomph. Yeah. More grit, and grit again, my terminology of grit, I don't know how to explain that. And the simplest way I could relate to you mm -hmm. would be like having, uh, again, French pressed, freshly ground coffee. coffee. With a little bit of the ground still yeah, in Exactly. There. So this thing has some grit to it, which mm -hmm. I really like. It tastes very expensive to me, you know, compared to the last wine. Last wine was a little more simpler, a little more forward. This one tastes a lot more expensive because it has mm -hmm. pedigree as well. It's got, it's got really interestingness beyond just fruit. Mm -hmm. You know, besides the mineral, besides the sea foam, it's got different layers. It's rocky, it's stony, it's minerally, all, all of the above. It flows so evenly. Absolutely. It's got heart, it's got soul. I think this wine is really, really good. I think you touch on a great point. You know, wines, there's a time and place for every type of wine. You can have easy drinking wines where it's just a, you know, random Tuesday night. This one is one you might want to pour to kind of spark a little bit more conversation about the wine and have people actually thinking about this. 
Chuck, I have to ask though, what are you eating with this? Yeah, so I was just thinking as I was tasting this thing, mm -hmm. you know, I would do things like paella. Ooh, okay. Kind you of know? coastal influence. Yeah, like it's, even though it's a Spanish dish because mm -hmm. it, sometimes it has some sausage inside, sometimes it has some chicken inside besides mm -hmm. seafood. You know, this wine can stand up to all that stuff. And it's because it's got such a lemony edge, it'll keep your palate fresh and alive between bites. I also would do this with uh, bouillabaisse from Provence, you know, seafood Ooh. stew. Yeah. But that seafood stew, if you go down there and you eat it like tampier, mm -hmm. for instance, domaine tampier, they have toast with this thick garlicky aioli. Oh. Aioli is kind of like a mayonnaise. Yeah. But, but theirs is thicker. It's just mm -hmm. egg, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's what I, you know, that's what mayonnaise is, right? It's just, I can't, I think it's a yolk and you, and you just whip it. Whip it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With some lemon and olive oil. So you just put that on the toast because when you eat it with the seafood uh, bullion, uh, bouillabaisse, it kind of gives a richness, right? So I would serve this totally Which one, this has unctuousness. Yeah. So but I would also do yeah. this with like, you know, heavier fishes like swordfish, opa, things like that, that are more juicy, more oily. Mm -hmm. you know, shitome? Uh, yeah, shitome is swordfish, swordfish yeah. yeah. And so you have to understand, uh, I was having this discussion with Kali the other day, you know, swordfish, even though they might be related, it's a very different fish. I mean, mm. just when you eat it, it's it's more meaty, it's, it's more flavorful. Marlin, kajiki, uh, nadagi, uh, the spear fishes like uh, mm -hmm. hebi, they're lighter fish, they're drier fish. It's, it's a very different. So this wine can stand up specifically to that base note of the swordfish. Yeah. Yeah, and I, a, you can't keep in, me in the dark. Do you know what's in this beautiful yes. bottle? So, uh, you know, our, our, our mutual friend Warren Sean, mm -hmm. he and his wife came back from uh, the Malfi Coast and he brought me some bottles of this and I said, we have to get this wine. And okay. so. Uh, it took him six and a half, seven years to get it. Mm -hmm. So Rovello is the village. So if you look oh, at the Malfi okay. Coast, it's like this. It's mm -hmm. very steep. It's very picturesque. It's very, and so that's uh, Rovello is one of the villages. So that's where this comes from. If you mm -hmm. look at the hillsides, they're steep like this, and they have to be terraced. Have to have. And to. I'm hoping that Kali can put on this uh, podcast. Oh a yeah, picture we want to see some of this dramatic. It's all white hillside. dolomitic limestone. And it's like this. Yes, but it has to be terraced, so you don't really notice how steep it is. But it's and steep. And I think you told me And it before, goes right down to the ocean. It's steeper than Cocoa Head. Yeah, it's like Cocoa Head. It's like Cocoa Head, okay. No, not the bottom of Cocoa Head, but when but it starts like, getting like that, it's like that. Mm. And then um, the two grapes are, uh, let's see, what are the two grapes? Falangina, mm -hmm. and the other grape is Bianca Lella. Mm. And so these are two grapes that were believed and brought to Italy. I've heard of Falangina. But, I don't but, even know. By, it. The, by the Greeks. BC. Mm -hmm. Wow. So before Christ. So, you know, ancient white dolomitic limestone. It dives right down to the ocean. So that's why the coastal winds are just bursting in there continuously 365 I can kind days of smell a year. That in the glass. I don't know if that's just perception, but I smell a little bit of like gusty sea, sea driven winds. So you have to understand, as I showed you in the picture, mm -hmm. the interesting thing about these vines, they come out of the wall horizontally like this. That's they just awesome. come out horizontally, just like that. They're 60 to 100 year old vines. They just come out of the wall. So they, they're about eight feet off the ground. Mm -hmm. And so the grapes just hang down. Can so you imagine the care this, in harvesting that? <laughs> it, it creates this canopy. Mm -hmm. But this canopy, so sometimes they grow vegetables underneath because it's a perfect cool environment to grow mm -hmm. vegetables and whatnot. But the more important aspect of that, mm -hmm. it kind of captures the cold air from the ocean in there. So it Makes extends sense. the growing season so that you, that's why you get so much physiological maturity and development in these grapes because it's a very unique growing. That's where that complexity yeah, is absolutely. coming from that we're smelling and tasting. Yeah, and so I bought this at Arfield Kailo right before we started shooting, mm -hmm. uh, half an hour before, 20 minutes before, and I paid $27.99 for this bottle. That's awesome. Yeah, which I think is a fantastic price. For the amount that's going on in this glass, like Michael would gladly buy a couple bottles yeah. of that and down it on like his birthday or something. But so go ahead, go to Arfield Kailua because this is specifically the Marisa Como, correct? Yes. Costa di Amalfi, Ravello Bianco for apparently $27, which is a steal. So go get you some. Yeah. Till <laughs> next time. Cheers. Thank you for watching. Aloha.